Hello everybody, my name is Steve Marchant and this is my wood shop. Today I'm going to be making a Christmas gift. It's going to be a set of four jigsaw pieces, about this big. Um, when they join together it'll be one big coaster uh, for a plate or so and they can separate into four separate uh, tea coasters. And what I'm going to try and do is do two sets in contrasting wood probably mahogany and oak because that's what I've got an abundance of and then I can switch two of each over and they can make a nice contrasting pattern between the two. Right, so let's go to it then. Okay, so first of all, to get the uh, size right, I have cut a piece of paper into a square um, and I've put a cup in the corner, uh, one in each corner to see if there's enough room and it works out just fine. So now what we've got to do is draw a cross into the paper to separate it out into four sections. And you can do this easily and accurately by just folding the paper over. Ding! That one there and that one there. That's one line. And there's the line. So we'll just mark those out with a pencil just so we can see them properly. Just grab a ruler. If you haven't got a ruler then shame on you. Okay. So now that we've got our four separate pieces we are going to get something circular so we can draw the nibs um, out on there as well. Alternatively, you can literally just go on the internet and find a picture of a four-piece jigsaw puzzle um, and either trace it over the monitor like I did before or print a copy out and stick it down and jobs are good. One. But I'll show you the, the, you know, the easiest and cheapest way of doing it without using ink or switching on a computer. Okay, okay, so I've got my vacuum nozzle and what we want to do, we don't want it too far up into the jigsaw puzzle piece otherwise it will only be held on by a tiny piece of wood. And we don't want it too far down, otherwise it won't be a jigsaw puzzle at all. It'll just slot together and slide out easily. So we're going to find a halfway point, which is about there. And then just slide it up so that the jigsaw puzzle can slot on the inside without being pulled out accidentally. There we are. And we'll just do that again. And there we go. As you can see, I wasn't happy with that first line I drew because it was a little bit too small and I think it might have just slipped out. Um, so I've drawn another one over the top of it to make sure I've got a good, a good size on there. Right, so the next job is we're going to stick this down on a piece of wood and cut it out. Um, it would be a good idea at this moment of time, if you have any tracing paper or if you've got another sheet of this paper, is to trace over it and do this as accurately as you can because we're going to be swapping over two pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and interchanging them between the two. Right, let's find some wood. Alrighty then, so I've made my copy of the same jigsaw puzzle piece. I uh, found some wood that I'm going to use. I'm obviously going to resaw this so it's the right size and it's going to be a bit trickier with this oak wood because obviously I'm only going to be able to fit one jigsaw puzzle piece on at a time. So I'm going to have to be very careful with how I cut them out. It might mean that I will have to cut these out with scissors first and then stick each, each individual piece on there, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, um, I won't bore you with the resawing and the cutting of all this wood because you've seen it all before. Um, and we'll resume when I've got these stuck down to the wood. Okie okay, dokie, so that is the wood cut down to the right widths. Um, oh, so this is the oak wood that I've got where I'm going to individually cut out each jigsaw puzzle piece. And then I've got two of the um, mahogany boards flattened and cut down as well. So what I've got to do now is just cover the wood with the masking tape, stick the double sided tape on and put the cutting templates down and cut them out on the scroll saw. 
And after that, it's going to be a simple case of burning some letters on to the wood, finishing the jigsaw piece up, sanding them down, make sure they fit nicely together, and then spraying some lacquer on them. Simple as that. Righty, and now that these are all taped up, put some tape on them, we're going to put some double sided tape over them again and stick the templates down. Ooh, that rain is coming down. I love the sound of the rain, especially when I'm inside and it's outside. Or for now it is anyway. There we go, we got one. Ah, so before I peel that one, I'm going to cut this out with some schizoras. Not my knife. And the thing I love most about this kind of cut on the bandsaw is that you can set the blade up once, <laughs> slot it in, and that will be it for the whole cut. There's no holes to drill, there's no unclipping the blade, no slotting the blade through, unscrewing it, slotting it through, screwing back in again. You can just set it up once, tighten down the tension, and you're good to go.
Okay, dokey. So by this point in the game, we should have a load of jigsaw puzzle pieces, uh, two sets of contrasting wood pieces. Um, I haven't taken the tape off of these yet, but I'm saving that till later because I love doing it. <laughs> um, once we do that, we're going to match up the pieces as best we can, see which ones fit better with each piece. Uh, if they don't quite fit, we'll just sand around the uh, exposed bits, external bits. Um, if these are too big, we can sand on the inside of these as well. And what we want to do is get it so that um, diagonally across from each other is two of the same wood. As you can see, these aren't fitting nicely together, but that's what we'll have to work out. Righty, let's peel this tape off then and let's see what we got. Okie dokie, so you can definitely tell the difference between the one that was cut out of one piece of wood, and not only is the grain all matching up, and it's a tight fit. This one, which was cut out of four individual pieces of wood, uh, obviously the grain direction is all going in different directions and the fit isn't quite what it should be. So trying to get these to swap over and interlock is going to be a bit tricky. Uh, like I said, it's just gonna be a bit of sanding, a bit of shaping, and just hoping <laughs> that they'll match up. Right, I'll start sanding now then. Righty, so this is the best orientation I can get them. Obviously there's overhangs here and there, but they can easily be trimmed down to match. Um, I'm obviously going to have to sand some of these edges smooth so the edges aren't so jaggedy, uh, but I have a feeling that for the majority of the time they're not going to be joined up together, so hopefully they won't be as noticeable. I'm going to burn um, an initial on each of these. So luckily I know a couple of families where there are four people. So we'll have one coaster for each person and we'll have a little initial on the corners here or in these corners so when you match them up they'll be next to each other. That'd be nice. Alright let's get to it then. I've just gone uh, lightly around the edges with an old sanding bell. Uh, I think 120 grit sanding belt. Just to ease over the edges and try and tidy up some of these little knots and uh, nicks that I've got on it. And I don't think it looks too bad. So I think I'm just going to uh, change this 80 grit one out for a 240 grit and just go over the edges really lightly with this. Um, I think it should look okay. I'll probably go over the top with some 80 grit just to flatten it all out and make sure it's all flushed together. Uh, right, I'll do that now. That actually looks quite good, I think. Nice and smooth as well to the touch, rounded over some of the edges. Um, I think it'd be nice if I round these over as well, over the corners, just to give it a bit of a smoother look. Right, let's do the same with this one then. Okay, well now that they are done, nice and sanded, I've sanded them up to 240 grit, which leaves them really nice and smooth and soft. Um, I'm, ooh, I just realised I'm the glue build up I've got on this workbench. <laughs> um, anyway, where was I? Now that they're all smooth, the next stage is to burn some initials in the centre here, uh, or around the outside, I haven't decided yet. Righty, so... I've written the initials on here in the corner that I wanted them to go in. Uh, I've got my wood burner out. I don't think I need to do a separate how-to video on how to use this thing. You literally plug it in and it gets hot and you can write with it. That's all there is to it. <laughs> um, got this one from Aldi. It comes with a lot of different tips and accessories. So you can do little patterns and different symbols, little tips for doing wide lines. I've got a very pointy one on there for now just to do this lettering. Uh, so I'm just going to plug it in. 
you've got to wait for it to get quite hot. And then when it's hot enough, you'll be able to write lettering on it. Uh, it does create a little bit of smoke, but nothing serious. You're not going to die from it. Uh, and chances are, <laughs> unless you leave the wood burner on the wood for a long period of time, it's not going to burn a hole in it or anything like that. It's not high enough temperature, but it's going to ruin, in, ruin your wood. That being said, if you do go over or out of the lines or if you mess up, a little bit of sanding will get rid of it straight away. Uh, all it is is you're burning the surface of the wood. So with the sanding you're taking that burnt layer off and it'll make it fresh again. So when using these things, try and go quite slowly over the lettering. If you do it too quickly you might snag on uh, the raised grain of the wood. Uh, you'll get darker spots and lighter spots. So take your time, go over it slowly, make sure you do it evenly. Uh, and then you'll end up with a nice, smooth, burnt letter. There we go. That's getting quite hot now. So these don't take long to heat up either. So they're plugged in directly to the mains, so uh, they've got 240 volts going through them to help them heat up. And another, another quick tip with these, um, the more you use them, the cooler it will get. So if you're, if you've got a lot of lettering to do, then you've got to take a break, let it heat up for a few seconds again, and then go back to it because the tip will be uh, less hot than it was when you started the drawing than it was uh, than it will be when you've finished it. Perfect. You probably notice that once the tips heat up, they'll change colour. So they used to be this nice gold brassy colour and it's changed to a darker brownie orange, uh, like a copper colour. So that's when you know it'll be it's hot enough to use. Right, let's get this done. So when you're doing this, you don't want to jab at the wood or, you know, push the soldering iron forwards. You basically just want to stroke it backwards, side to side, because you don't want to create any pressure on the wood in one point uh, and not another, because it will just make a hole. And you'll have one really dark spot in one area and not in the others. So just start and drag back. Start here and just slowly drag backwards. There we are. There we are, an A for Ashley. So, another thing you've got to be careful of is that burnt wood will build up on the tip of this thing and also prevent the heat from transferring. So every now and again, just wipe it off onto your workbench or if you've got a, um, a cloth or a paper towel that's slightly damp and that'll help get the uh, residue off. Leave that to heat up a little bit more again. Ah, a bit of coffee. There we go. Unfortunately, with these wood burning sets, uh, soldering irons and whatnot, they have a very short cable.
You'll find as well that some woods just burn easier than others. Uh, this oak is um, coming out really nicely, burning very easily. And on the stand, as soon as you finish uh, with a soldering iron or the wood burning pen or whatever you want to call it, unplug it straight away and remember that it stays hot for a long time. So keep it well out of the way, make sure you're not going to nudge it or touch it anywhere. Um, there we go, and that is finished. Alrighty, so the last thing we've got to do with this now is to give it some coats of spray lacquer and it will really bring the colours out, really bring the contrasting wood out uh, and it will seal in the burnt wood as well so you won't be able to rub bits off, it won't flake off, it will seal it all in nice, protect it um, and I think it's going to be beautiful. Righty, here we go. What an absolute beautiful colour. Uh, I love the contrast. It's really brought the grain out. It's emphasised the lettering on the oak. Um, I am so happy with this. It's just going to take a couple more coats of spray lacquer, flip them over and do the underside, um, and buff them down with some of that brown paper. Um, and the job's good. And, uh, really pleased with that. Righty, um, they are all spray lacquered up, all done. Uh, they didn't turn out too bad at all. Um, it's gone way dark in here now, I've got a light on, uh, because it's so cold in here in this conservatory that the spray lacquer took a lot longer to dry than I thought it would. Um, I'll just show you a couple of the finished pieces. So that's the top two. Um, you'll notice, ooh, that bottom, there's an A and a H on here. Um, nice bit of personalisation. And then the bottom one, have an S and a G, and they slot together like that. Woo! <laughs> I can't really show you very well because I'm holding it. But I'm very, very pleased with how they have turned out. Let me just take you off. There we go. Nice and shiny. Nice and smooth. All dry. Nice lettering. I'm really, really pleased with that. Absolutely chuffed. So it started out as something like this and it's finished up beautifully so all there is left to say is thank you so much for watching my video it really means a lot to me um my videos are getting more and more views i've got more subscribers um it does make me feel amazing thank you everybody so much please subscribe to my channel uh if you'd like to see more content like this uh in the run to christmas obviously it's, it's getting there <laughs> it's getting there we're nearly there uh, I'll be doing more gift ideas, personalised gifts. Um, so we had the Wayne's nameplate. Um, I've had a cutting board, uh, not the cutting board, sorry, the tea tray. And I've just done the jigsaw puzzle tea coasters. So there's l different things, easy to make every time, uh, easy to personalise if you have a router, if you have a wood burner. Um, the wood burner is really not expensive. I got mine from Aldi for about twenty pounds. I think. It I think it was about £15 actually. Really cheap. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if there's anything you absolutely are bored about it. Leave a comment in the descriptions, that'd be great. Uh, tell me what you thought about it. Share it with anybody you think might benefit from this. Any woodworkers you know need ideas for Christmas ideas, Christmas gifts, or gifts in general. But that really is enough from me. I'll stop yabbering on now. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.